My first piece of advice to you is gonna say, let's eliminate the word negotiate from our vocabulary. And when you turn the word negotiate into the word ask, gender effect completely goes away. Okay? Now, that's semantics. Like, substantially, there's absolutely no difference in the behavior. But ask is a submissive, ladylike thing to do, right? There's nothing wrong with asking. So you start to use the word ask, it changes people's perception about what's actually occurring. I'm fine to ask, that's fine, it's just the negotiating thing I don't like, so then I'll ask for more money. Gender effect completely goes away. So one of the things I think is hardest is to get people to overcome the, the associations that they have with the word itself and say, think about what you're actually doing. You're asking. I, because in negotiation by definition are circumstances under which you don't have really the power or authority to make another person comply. So they are all asks. Um, the other word that I like is problem solving. So my advisor is the only person I know who probably has a reputation for being more assertive than I am, um, and great female role model to me. But she said, I don't negotiate, I just solve problems. And when you think about it like that, right, it's the same thing. You have a problem, I have it. Let me tell you, I got a problem. Can we solve it? I'm not afraid of solving problems. Negotiating, I don't really like, but solving problems I could do. So the first thing we have to think about is reframe what's actually occurring in a way that gives us a confidence to actually engage in the conversation. Second thing, um, planning and preparation. So if one thing we need to start to do is to start to figure out what's negotiable and what's not. Because the more confident we are that negotiation is a norm of what is expected to happen, the better we do at it. That a lot of times people will try to suggest, right? And as, we, as do we, that things are non-negotiable, right? That there's no movement on anything. But we can ask the questions. And the, you know, the question of, can I negotiate this? That's never generally goes very well because people will say, well, no, and, and they could be truthful. Like, well, other people do, but no, we don't want you to negotiate this. Questions that really try to get around, okay, what are the parameters here? Are there any circumstances under which outcomes are different? And if I can understand that, then that kind of gives me, gives me an opening. So to start to kind of ask those questions. Um, related to that, to plan and prepare, okay? I guarantee you may or may not like to negotiate, but I am sure you are a good researcher, right? Give you a problem, okay? And you will figure it out, right? Best, you know, you have, you have a, a, a sick relative and you need to find the right doctor. Someone has told you that that pair of shoes is sold out in your size and by gosh, you're gonna find it somewhere in this country, right? You have a research problem, you're gonna figure out how to get the information that you need to solve your problem. Well, negotiation actually starts, all good negotiation starts with good research about what's a good solution, what's possible. And the, research, the, the, the psychological research here is that when there is a good understanding of what's negotiable and what's not, when there's a good understanding of what a good goal or target is and what a good kind of bottom line is, when those things are well known, the gender effects also go away. When you take the ambiguity out of the process and the woman is confident, I know what a good deal is and I don't have it and I'm gonna go after something, women do a lot better. And so that's one of the things that we can do is to start doing that research to figure out, are you lacking something that, you, that is, is a reasonable thing to have? And the, more, the better prepared we are, the more confident we are um, to be able to do that.